Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Frankie and I'm back with Exam Tay. This month we're talking all about the menopause. Now the menopause is a time in a woman's life when she stops having periods and is no longer able to get pregnant naturally. And this usually happens on average age 51. It can happen between ages 45 and 55 and still be considered the normal age of menopause. And the reason for the cessation of periods is because the ovaries stop producing the female hormone estrogen. So the menopause is associated with reduced levels of the hormone estrogen and therefore can come with some accompanying symptoms. The menopause is a completely natural Natural part of female aging and what tends to happen is the estrogen levels start to decline so you experience perimenopause first which is where periods become less regular and more infrequent until they stop completely in some women there may be a gradual decline over a couple of years in other women periods may stop more abruptly surprisingly not all women going through the menopause experience symptoms whilst many other women have a really tough time going through some quite debilitating symptoms the most obvious one is a change to periods so as I mentioned these may become less frequent and more irregular until they stop completely and this can happen over a couple of years. Menopause is typically defined as not having a period for over 12 months. There are some mental health symptoms that can also accompany menopause. Things like changes to mood, particularly low mood, anxiety and depression, irritability, changes to sleep, problems with concentration which is also known as brain fog and issues with low self-esteem. Alongside the mental health symptoms there's also some really debilitating physical symptoms. A well-known one is hot flushes and night sweats and this is where there's a sudden change in body temperature a woman will come across really hot and sweaty and clammy it can be associated with feelings of anxiety and dizziness other physical symptoms include heart palpitations headaches muscle aches and joint pain skin changes such as dryness and itching reduced bone density and increased risk of osteoporosis reduced sex drive and one that people don't tend to talk about as commonly which is changes to your body and in particular weight gain as mentioned the menopause is a reduction in the female hormone estrogen and these hormonal changes can be associated with a change in metabolism, fat distribution and your energy balance. A reduction in estrogen can lead to a reduction in muscle mass and this in turn leads to a reduced metabolic rate. So the less muscle you have, the less energy you burn even at rest. So postmenopausal women may actually require up to 200 calories a day less than when they were premenopausal. And therefore if there's no changes to energy balance, so calories in versus calories out, this can lead to a subtle but gradual increase in weight. A way to combat that is to slightly reduce your calories each day and increase your energy expenditure through exercise. Lower estrogen levels and lower muscle mass can lead to less calories burned each day, but also may lead to increased storage of fat, particularly around the abdominal area. And this isn't an issue just for cosmetic reasons, but I recognize that that can be an issue for some women, but actually increased abdominal fat specifically has been associated with increased risk of type two diabetes and cardiovascular vascular disease, so heart attacks and strokes. So it is something that you may want to be aware of. And I think also the symptoms of menopause itself can also contribute to issues with weight management. For example, if you're someone who's really experiencing a lot of hot flushes that interfere with sleep, sleep deprivation can lead to fatigue and you're less likely to want to exercise the next day if you've had a poor night's sleep. And changes to mood, things like anxiety, irritability, mood swings can also make it more difficult to do regular exercise. But if you are experiencing some of these symptoms, there are some things that we can do to help. The first is that if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, I do recommend that you reach out for support. I think the first port of call should be your GP who can recommend you some educational tools and direct you to sources of support. Many women will choose to take HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. And this is where the female hormones, estrogen, and also in some cases, progesterone are replaced through tablets, gels, patches, or sprays to try and combat some of the symptoms. Some women fear that HRT increases their risk of weight gain, but actually this isn't scientifically proven. Some some women may experience increased water retention and bloating, which they may think is weight gain, but this tends to settle between four and eight weeks after commencing HRT. If HRT isn't for you, and I do advise you to discuss that with your own doctor, then there are some other supportive treatments that you can try. The mood changes, many women actually benefit from cognitive behavioral therapy and other forms of mental health support, such as antidepressant treatment. There's also options for topical estrogens. So things like gels and creams that can be applied topically to combat symptoms such as vaginal dryness. Exercise can play a role both for improving bone density and reducing the risk of osteoporosis and also plays a role in weight management. Exercise can also be a great one for helping with symptoms of insomnia and reduced sleep quality and also with mood because we know that exercise releases endorphins. Changes to diet and nutrition can also help with some of the symptoms such as weight gain and energy levels and there are actually some other medications such as certain blood
blood pressure medications that can be used in certain circumstances to treat symptoms such as hot flushes. So I do recommend that if you are experiencing any of these symptoms that you reach out for support. I think also chatting to other women who are going through these symptoms and realizing that you're not on your own and sharing mechanisms and ways to cope with these symptoms can also really help. So if you are going through any of these symptoms, I really encourage you to interact with each other in the comments in the comment box below and feel free to ask any questions. My name is Dr. Frankie. I'm here with Exante and I hope you found this video really useful. Bye now.